Come on in, family. Come on in, come on in, come on in. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm excited about tonight's session. So excited about tonight's session. And um, I think you guys are in for a treat. Uh, this this is important. It's an uh, extremely important topic, I, I know for a fact. Um, but along with the importance, it's intriguing. It's intriguing. Marvina, good to see you, my sister. Good to see you. I rarely ever drink energy drinks. I really, really used to be addicted to them a long, long time ago. And uh, before I got married, we've been uh, together for about 10 years. And um, I said, like, I'm, I'm not going to dabble with these too much. But I saw a new drink, um, and I wanted to try it. So this is the first one I had in a very long time. And it's probably going to be the last, but it's fairly decent. So uh, I'm glad I tried it. Um, yes, good evening. Good evening, Erica. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's good to see you all. Erica, this is a topic you gonna, you're going to absolutely love because I know that you love uh, discussing apologetics. And we are staying in the vein of... Evidence for My Faith, uh, the series that we have going on every Friday at the church. It's been epic, you guys. It has been epic. It has been extremely epic. God has moved. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen, but if not, go back and uh, look at the um, services that are on my page. Uh, I use because of the, the momentum that we have on my personal page. Um, I, I put the services on my page first and then share them to the uh, church's page and so yes um they're, they're on there go back and look at them please go back and look at them but i'm excited absolutely excited i promise you um you're gonna be excited too um god has been just doing some great stuff we've given everybody else a chance to come on in uh come on in come on in come on in and um if you are on you guys know what we do at Beth Mata. First Lady, I see you. Uh, you guys know what we do at Beth Mata. Of course, we show love. We get the hearts going crazy on the screen, not for myself, but for each other. Y'all know, if y'all was in the sanctuary, I'd be giving hugs after service and everything like that. We can't do that right now. So this is the way that we do it. So uh, everybody, if you can, get some hearts and share some hearts with somebody. And Ashana, I see you in the building. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Well, I see the hearts. Uh, everybody get some hearts. And we do a quick three. We do what we call a quick three. Uh, we get off this real quick. Go share this to a quick three people. Um, and, uh, and then we come back in. Sharing is evangelism. Sharing is evangelism. I want you to know that. There is a modernized way to evangelize. Yes, there's a modernized way to evangelize, and it is as simple as the click of a button. There is someone that is struggling to know whether or not if Christianity is true. There's someone that is struggling to know whether or not if uh, they should follow God. They're struggling to know whether or not they should uh, give this thing a try. And so uh, uh, it's important for us to let them know uh, uh, that there is someone that's teaching truth. There is a, a place that you can go and get the word of God. And so I want you, I want you guys uh, uh, to, to, to share this, share this, share this, share this, share this before we get started. We will open up in prayer in just a few, uh, but I want to give some more people a chance to come on in. Uh, give some people a chance to come on in. Everybody, uh, tell me how your day was. My day was great. Did a lot of running around, had a lot of clients to see, but it, amidst it all, I was able to take my wife to a nice uh, new restaurant that her and I tried, along with my little sister called uh, Poppy's Cuisine, and the food was delicious. I had honey curry lamb, and it was delicious. Uh, but tell me how your day was as well. Tiring, on the road all day, but my day was good. How about you? How about you, Erica? How about you, Marvina? Uh, Queen, how was your day? Uh, uh, Nishana, how was your day?
Come on, guys. Tell me how your day was. Oh, yes. She... So I'm I'm I hear you say you 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 <laughs> had a carnival. I wish we would have known we would have come. Oh yes. Is this the last day of the carnival or is you know is it uh, are there more days that, that the carnival will be open? Um Nishan, I'm glad your day is well. Queen, I I firsthand understand what you're going through. <laughs> She said, my, my day was good dealing with the teething baby. So I, I, I know you right. I'm, I'm here. I'm with you. I understand. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Darius, good to see you. Good to see you in the building. Good to see you. Good to see you. Glad this. I hope you stay with us. Glad to see you joined us. Yes. My brother, I've known him for a very long time. So it's good to see you uh, stop by and see us virtually in uh, the Bible study. It's always a pleasure to see uh, uh, some friends that I've known for a very long time. Oh, it wasn't public, just for the preschoolers. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, yes, he said, and he hates car seats, so the ride was eventful. I can, yes, I, yes, I can attest. I can attest to that. I can attest to that. If we have not, before we get started, tag someone, tag someone. If we have not, tag someone, bring them in. Call up the members who you know are supposed to be in Bible study. Tell them, come to Bible study. Send them a text message real quick. Say, we want to see you in the building, virtually. It's Bible study time. We take Bible study seriously because, of course, we truly desire to grow. We truly, truly desire to grow in God, in our knowledge of God, and it is a necessity for us to take time out on a daily and weekly basis to uh, 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 learn more of him. It's okay to know what we know, uh, but it's, it's an extremely important to dig deep and to come together and share with each other. It is extremely important. So I'm excited, guys. Uh, if I can get some better service this way, this, this might be awesome. Uh, might be much better like this. Uh, All righty. We're about to get started. We're about to get started. We're going to open up in prayer and then we're going to keep moving. All righty. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness toward us. Thank you for every open door. Thank you for every way made. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. God, there's such a fight going on in the atmosphere. Oh, there's something coming down the pike. Oh, God, and we're glad that we're on your side. We're glad that, oh, Lord, you have allowed us to be able to be in what we call a safe haven by being under you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the secret place. Father, we pray that you would keep us in the secret place. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take refuge in you, O Lord, amidst what's going on. We take refuge in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Keep us today. Keep us today. As we study your word today, take us deeper in confidence in you. Take us deeper into the bowels of revelation. Take us deeper in our understanding of who you are. Give us great clarity, O oh God. You said in your word that it is given to us to know the mysteries of God. You also said in Daniel that in the last days, knowledge would be increased. You also said my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So it wouldn't be uh, because knowledge isn't increased and available, but people will not want to participate in obtaining knowledge. Lord, give each and every hearer a desire to obtain great knowledge, not the knowledge of man, but the knowledge of God, the knowledge that produces sanctification, knowledge that produces, my God, righteousness, knowledge that produces consecration and reverence toward who you are. Father, today, 
We lean toward you. We lean toward you. We ask for your hand today. We ask for your heart today. We ask for your mouth today. We ask for your feet that we would be guided in the right direction. Your hand that you would be able to give us, my God, a miracle as a result. Your heart so that we can know truly how you feel and your mind so that, my God, we may be able uh, uh, to be able to understand what your thoughts are concerning the situations and your mouth that we would speak what you speak. Be silent when you are silent. And we thank you in advance for all things. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm ready for this. I'm ready. Turn with me uh, and put this in the chat if you can. Uh, John chapter 17, verse 17. Robert Morant, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Pray that you stay with us. John chapter 17, verse 17. Uh, put that in the chat with me, family. John chapter 17, verse 17. John chapter 17, verse 17. I haven't watched this show in years, guys, but... Johnny Bravo used to be one of my favorite characters. His epic failures to try to uh, uh, talk to women was just hilarious to me a long time ago. How cool he thought he was. I haven't watched it in a long time, but I said, you know, I'm going to get a shirt. My wife blessed me with this shirt. It's pretty cool, so I appreciate you. <laughs> John chapter 17, verse 17. Yes, John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Oh my gosh. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. My father, Bishop Mitchell, would say, what is truth? Then he would quote from John 17, 17. He said, thy word is truth. Your word is truth. One more scripture, and then we'll... we'll uh, uh, Go right into the lesson, and that's John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 6. Please put that in the chat. John chapter 14, verse 6. We do this so that anyone who sees this afterwards, if they don't get anything else, they get the scriptures. Uh, so let's, let's make sure we please put these in the chat. John chapter 14, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. All right. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh, my God. This is extremely profound. An extremely profound statement from Jesus Christ, the God of heaven, manifested in flesh. This is him talking. I am the way, the truth, and the life. All righty, let's dive right in. I was doing some research, family, and I uncovered that Christianity is the most persecuted religion in the world, according to a survey from Cato Institute, C-A-T-O Institute, uh, their statistics uh, this article was written by Doug Bando, B-A-N-D-O-W, in March 2022. This is a very recent statistic. He uh, uh, expressed Open Doors USA, which is a company or an organization that compiles information, uh, 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 gathers information, and, and uh, makes surveys and statistics as I'm uh, giving to you right now. Uh, watch this. He stated, in this case, there are 300, Daniel Blanks, God bless you. I pray you stay with us. Pray you stay with us. You'll be blessed if you stay with us. Uh, 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 yes, the Christian faith outside of America, there are 300 today. There are 360 million documented Christians 
where persecution is significantly high according to last year's numbers. Of course, we don't have this year's numbers yet because we're in the year. Within that time, there are 5,600 Christians murdered. 6,000 were detained or imprisoned. 4,000 plus were kidnapped and more than 5,000 churches or Christian facilities was destroyed. This is important for us to know. When we're talking about truth, we're talking about uh, not only the, the uh, effects of truth, but those that may hate the truth. Scripture tells us that we, we be hated for his namesake. Uh, blessed are you when men will persecute you and revile you for my namesake. Happy are ye. This is what the scripture says. All right. According to the article from Christian Today, every day, 13 Christians are killed because of their faith. 12 uh, churches or Christian buildings are attacked and possibly destroyed every day. 12 Christians every day are unjustly arrested or imprisoned and another five are abducted. However, according to last year's report or the year before last, uh, 2020, in places where there is extreme persecution of Christianity, there was 260 million in 2020. And as of 2022, it has increased to 360 million people. So while persecution is going on, there is still a growth uh, outside of America. Here we, we're talking about there. There is there. Watch this. A hundred million new com converts to Christianity. This is powerful. In the face of catastrophe, in the face of death, in the face of great persecution, extreme persecution, it has been it is it has been proven that Christianity is still thriving. Another great statistic that I don't even have in my notes is that the Bible is still the number one most sold book in the world. It's important for us to know this. The reason why I'm stating this and you would ask, why does this have anything to do uh, with the truth? It is because I want you to see that there has to be something to this. That in spite of all of the persecution that is going on, individuals are still willing to die for Christ. Still willing to die for the gospel and the word of God. This is important for us to know. And, and yes... Eric, uh, 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 Minister Erica says, most stolen as well. It is the most stolen. That's the truth. It's the truth. Now, listen, let's keep going. In America, according to a, a 2019 article written by the Gospel Coalition, the TGC, anti Christian attitudes are more likely to be white, male, wealthy, highly educated, politically progressive and irreligious individuals. Now, we know that this makes up majority of, God bless you, Michelle, this makes up majority of uh, uh, those that are in power in America, in the higher ups of our government. It's 90%, 95% white still. It's not, and listen, when I say this, I'm not saying I have anything against a white person. I'm telling you what is going on as it pertains to truth. God bless you. My big brother, Pastor Demetrius Jacobs is in the building. Uh, I, 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 I bless God that you're with, it, with us, man. I truly appreciate you. I, and I'm going somewhere. This is not about black or white. So stay with me. Now, uh, I, want you, I want you guys to know this is not about black or white. I'm giving you statistics as to what is going on. I gave you statistics as to what, how uh, uh, Christianity is being fought in other nations. And now I'm also giving you how Christianity is being fought in America. 
of course, to this, to this, to this end, uh, you know, most of the laws, uh, uh, legislation from Congress and the House and so forth, a lot of its leaders, 90 percent, 90%, uh, I'm sorry, 96, 97 uh, percent uh, white in, in those particular areas. Now, we also know that uh, Peter Atkins, who is one of the, the world's leading scientists, we also know that uh, Darwin, who was a white man who created Darwinianism, has, di has been diametrically opposed to uh, Christianity and has done all that it can to make sure that Christianity does not continue to thrive in America. Uh, this is important for us to know. Please, please, please hear me. This is important for us to know. While they're being extremely aggressive in other parts of the world, there is still an, a strategy in place in America to annihilate and outlaw Christianity. It is not based off of physical force yet. All right. But what it is, uh, uh, it's uh, by way of education. Uh, 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 by way of of of, of academia, uh, uh, by way of vocation, it is stated statistically speaking that that uh, 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 let me let me make sure I get this 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 statistic to you. Um, I want to go back. Uh, I want to make sure I say this in Christian today. Uh, every day, uh, 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 thirteen Christians are killed because of their faith. Twelve. Uh, 12 churches or Christian buildings are attacked every day. Christians are unjustly arrested or imprisoned and another five are abducted. I said that. Watch this, though. This is important for us to know this as well. Humanists uh, 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 believe or I'll, 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 let me state verbatim as it, as it pertains to discrimination in the workplace in a book called Compromising Scholarship. There was a survey done that stated white educated men that have the same characteristics as were listed above that I mentioned to you guys earlier discriminate against a candidate who identifies as Christian, a spe a specifically and especially a conservative pro uh, Protestant. This is important because uh, they are trying in academia, they are trying in vocations to eradicate those coming into power who have Christian knowledge and Christian standards. Why is this important? Why is this important? Why isn't the church talking about the way that truth is being attacked in uh, America and abroad? Is it because they don't truly understand or believe that this is truth? So the question stands, what is truth? The Hebrew word truth is the word emmet. Can you put in the chat the word emmet? E-M-M-E-T. Please put that in the chat for someone. You can put the word truth and then put Hebrew emmet. Uh, or however you decide to word it, but I want you to know uh, uh, the phrase, my truth gets under my skin. Oh, we're about to address that as well. That's where we're leading to, uh, Minister Erica. That's, that's exactly where we're leading to. It's important for us to address this. Uh, uh, we're, 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 we're leading to that. We're leading to that. But, but please put this in the chat. Uh, 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 it's important for us to know what, what the, the, the Hebrew, the, the original meaning of the word truth, right? The original meaning, it, it means a very specific, watch this, it pertains to a very specific connotation of fact. The original meaning, the Hebrew, it means the whole truth. Uh, beginning, middle, and end. The whole story, beginning, middle, and end. Why is this important? Why is this important? It is, it is important because secular humanists have, have dumbed down truth to mean what, not just relativism, my truth, but it also uh, uh, is reduced to whatever is physical. Whatever is physical is only part and partial of what is total truth. Let's dig deep now. Let's dig deep now. Let's, let's go a little further in this. It's important for us to discuss this. 
Now, uh, 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 looking at this thing, if we base truth solely upon that which can be explained away physically only, which natural science uh, is trying to do, secular humanists are trying to do, if we do that, then what we have to do is we have to uh, uh, eradicate and annihilate anything from our truth system that is not explained away by physical phenomena. Mm, mm. Why is this dangerous? Uh, for those of you that were in service on last Friday, you got a picture into why this is dangerous. This is dangerous because the most important parts of human existence are things that cannot be explained away uh, by physical phenomena, uh, phenomena and is not tangible in the sense that it can be reduced down to atoms. Uh, 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 let, let, let's, let's talk about it. All right. So peace, peace is not tangible. Peace is not tangible. It cannot be reduced down to physical atoms yet without peace. Without peace, you are unable to sleep at night. Without peace, you, 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 you're uneasy uh, 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 with stress. stress. Stress is another thing. That is not a uh, uh, physical or cannot be reduced to physical atoms. Uh, 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 but, but uh, uh, stress can cause you to have physical ailments, uh, in physical impairments. That which is a uh, uh, spiritual, that which is above the natural, that which is above the physical ultimately affects the physical and natural realm. Why is this important? This is important because it lets us know that there is a world outside of that which is physical. I'm going somewhere with truth. The Bible says in John 17, 17, uh, 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 thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. We're going to get into this scripture. We're going to get into the scripture. Now, now watch this. Not only can you, uh, 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 not only will you have to annihilate a uh, 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 peace, uh, not only will you have to annihilate the fact that there is something true of, uh, uh, of stress, a uh, 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 a disease, if you will, called stress that takes over the body and the mind and produces illness. I believe there are diseases in the physical realm, but I believe there are also diseases in the soulless realm as well. So the soulless realm, one of which is stress. Stress is not, uh, it might impact you physically, but it doesn't come from the physical realm. It comes from the realm of the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. All right. But if we have to eradicate those things, let's say we have to, to do as modern scientists like Richard Dawkins and Peter Atkins is trying to do, reducing truth down to physicality, saying there is no need for religion. Science has been able to explain away everything. Sister Patrice is in the building. God bless you, my sister. If, if we are trying to reduce those things down to, uh, to, to, to just physicality, we have to do away with love. We have to do away with loyalty, which this generation cries about. Well, I'm loyal. I'm loyal. I'm loyal. I'm loyal. This, uh, what is loyalty in a world where we can be deduced and reduced down to that which is physical only? Uh, this is dangerous. This is dangerous because what it means is that we only have a part uh, of the truth. We don't have the original meaning of what truth is, the Hebrew word emet, which means the whole story of truth, the beginning, the middle, and the end, the totality of that which is true, the totality of that which is a fact. If we attempt to reduce things down to natural phenomena or that which can be reduced to atoms, the very smallest physical part particle that we can find, then we would reduce. Deuce, watch this. Come on now. 
We will reduce uh, 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 things that are important like intuition. It's something about a mother's intuition. When she says, don't you go outside today, something is going to happen. Or they call you on the phone and say, baby, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Because it seems as if I feel in my spirit that something is not right between you and the hubby. Or something is not right with the kids. It's important that we do not reduce truth down to that which is physical. If you reduce truth down to that which is physical, you'll get rid of religion, which is what they're trying to do. Humanists are trying to get rid of religion, but uh, uh, specifically Christianity. But if you do that, you reduce the supernatural. Uh, you, you reduce the supernatural or you eradicate the supernatural. Then you have a whole element of truth that cannot be explained. This is important. This is important. It is important for us to address. It is important for us to address. I wish there was so much more of the members of, of Beth Mata on today because this is extremely important for us to understand. Extremely important for us to remember because they're trying to. They're trying to eradicate. They're trying to eradicate Christianity and the idea that it's needed. And the reason why you cannot uh, 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 annihilate Christianity is because the very realm of hope depends on there being another realm. The very realm, the very reality of faith, the very reality of hate, the very reality of evil, the very reality of good, the very reality of bad is based on the fact that there is a realm outside of that which is physical. Here we are. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Let's go. Let's let's go a tad bit deeper. Truth. My sister, Minister Erica, discussed this. Truth. If it is reduced down to relativism, what is relativism? Relativism is uh, 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 w when something is relative, it means it's up for interpretation. It is up to you to believe that which you desire to believe uh, uh, to be true. It's relative. Or uh, another modernized term, they say to each his own. The reason why this is catastrophic, not only to Christianity, but to reality, is that it deduces my my, my brother Benjamin uh, 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 Ben is in the building. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. The reason why we cannot deduce a uh, 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 truth down to relativism relativism is because it becomes dangerous for all of society. What do you mean, Pastor Mitchell? Let's talk about it. If truth is only true based off of my desire for it to be true, or whether I deem it to be true. That means that truth can and will be, if someone can say this is my truth, it, it, it is up for or uh, uh, deduced down to whether I want it to be true or not. Now, let's just say, for example, and I, I'm, I'm using I'm not bashing homosexuals. You love who you want to love, boo boo. It's not it's not godly. And there is a place uh, for those that will reject the knowledge of God. However, I am a human. I'm not putting you in any place. I pray that you come to the salvific, uh, the salvific knowledge and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm saying this because it is very pervasive in our society. And this is a great example to use. Now, imagine a man saying that he is a woman simply because he has cut off a specific body part and has decided to insert it where it's in a different direction uh, and he has decided to use hormone pills uh 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 uh, uh to truth is not subjective uh, uh hormone pills to grow boobs now uh, uh, uh you have deduced down because you have stated that this is your truth you want to call yourself a female you, you make yourself a female because you call yourself a female. What that means is, 
uh, watch this. And y'all, y'all, some people might get upset at me and, and the live might decrease in numbers. It's fine. I just got to tell the truth. What you're saying is that the, the complexity uh, in which God has made female can re can be reduced down to uh, 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 that which you desire for it to be. Uh, I don't I don't agree with that. W what I mean by that is there is something beautiful internally about the nature of a female, whether she may have had to be uh, uh, independent growing up and she becomes masculine in that she has to has to carry and has to build and has to do these things there is something innately feminine that shows the beauty of womanhood the fact that she there's nothing more feminine nothing more beautiful than the fact that a woman can give life that she is a life giver the uterus the fallopian tubes all of those things that 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 god has uniquely uh, uniquely and intricately put inside of a female the the mother's intuition the mother's ability ability to love that a father does not have uh, it, it, it's some is something is something about it that that cannot be reduced down to uh, just a person desiring to call themselves a female is something about the real true woman the totality the beginning the middle and the end the image of female uh, 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 womandom uh, that that is is, is God centered that can only be done by someone that sits high and looks low. It cannot be reduced down to someone who just decides to say, I am a woman. It's a pressure that's that 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 takes that, that no man will ever understand whether he he calls himself a woman what postpartum depression is. No man will ever understand what it means for a woman to have the weight of whether she can ch carry children or not. What the weight of understanding why if she can't carry kids, why am I barren? Why am I barren? I'm designed to carry this thing. That no man will ever understand. No man will ever. There is an intricate part of womanhood that cannot be deduced down to what we decide to say with words. It's not subjective. It's not relative. It, it, it's not. Uh, it, it doesn't become just because I say it becomes. But let's go down that road. If truth is relative and it is my truth because I call it my truth. Then I can become a giraffe because that's my truth. If I truly believe it, if I truly decide, you know, your moms used to say, if it looked like a duck, dad used to say, quack like a duck, it's a duck. That's a dangerous saying now because it can look like a man. It can sound like a man, but it does not mean it's a man. It can look like a woman. It can sound like a woman, but it does not mean that it's a woman. If I am saying because I have went through a psychological process where I've sat down in, in front of the psychologist and I have embranded and embedded in my mind that I'm a female to the point that I think I'm a female or I'm a dog to the point that I think I'm a dog, that I become a dog, it means that that which can uh woo, that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be i'm gonna be i'm gonna be fussed at but but that which is true is now deduced to a, a, a truth based upon how one feels based upon how one feels thank you for pushing me uh, uh pastor i appreciate you you said teach pastor i need that uh, because this is a hard message to preach it really is it's a heart message to preach. If if I can be deduced down to 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 a, a, a cup. Now let me let me tell you the danger of where this is going. If I can say, "Oh Lord, I can love who I love because it's true," then soon, as it has already tried to happen, the pedophile can say, "I can't help who I love." It's true. Uh, it, now, now the, the argument with the LGBT community was and they had to try to uh, uh, switch it and state that it's a fact. You can't help 
who you love. That's what that was the argument of the LGBT community. They even tried to get biologists to be involved and say that there is a gay gene, although that was overturned and there by, by biology, there is no gay gene. It, you cannot be born gay. That uh, All those things are learned behavior. It, it, let me put a pin here. It is up to the parents to teach the, 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 the children the way that they should go. Oh, I'm in scripture, y'all. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they get older, they won't depart from it. It doesn't mean that they won't be challenged. It won't, it won't. Now, now, let me, let me, oh, Lord Jesus. Let me say this. It is nothing wrong with a man believing that a, another man is good looking. Uh-huh. I look at my brother. I can determine whether he's ugly or handsome. I, I can determine whether he's ugly or handsome. But 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 toxic masculinity has made watch this. Y'all going to be upset with me tonight. Good God have mercy. Toxic masculinity has made it wrong for men to call each other good looking. So a man that that grows up thinking that other men look nice will ultimately reduce their, 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 their attraction or immediately see themselves as homosexual because they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll take what is considered to be natural. And, and, and because in the, in, the, in the realm of toxic masculinity, it is not accepted. It's only one place for them to go. It is important that true men, real men change the trajectory of what it means uh, 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 to be truly masculine. It is not wrong to tell a man that he looks nice. It is not wrong for a man to be hugged by another man. It is not wrong for a man to say to another man, I love you. And when we fail to do that, the homosexual will come and say, I love you. And immediately it'll grab the mindset of an individual to believe or feel like he has to go that direction. That has happened all too often. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen men who who state that they that they think that men look nice. That 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 uh, uh, they 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 were uh, uh, laughed at by their peers and ultimately found a safe place with those that were homosexual because they weren't judged. And as a result, since they were embraced, they went further into the lifestyle. We gotta change that. We got to change that because that is not truth. That is not truth. Do you know that, uh, that, that Jesus is the word? The word declares that, that, that uh, 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 David was good looking. He was ruddy and good looking. It also talks about Benjamin, that he was kingly. Uh, uh, I mean, Saul, who was of the tribe of Benjamin, that he was kingly. He was tall. He was handsome. Now, are you saying that God, that Jesus Christ is gay because he was able to, he was the word made flesh. Is, are, you, are we calling him gay? Are we calling him homosexual because he identified David as good looking? Are we, are we calling him gay or homosexual because we identify, uh, he identified Benjamin as a good looking person? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. We got to change these things. These things are not truth. But truth, truth, when it is deduced down, when it is deduced down to what we believe truth to be, then, then someone can come along. There you go. A, a, a boy's first male love is his dad. Uh, 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 absentee can cause misinterpretation. Good God, have mercy. That's a strong t a statement, Sister Patrice. Uh, 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 Marvina says, and spend more time with the kids and don't let YouTube and Google and these TV shows raise them. There is, oh, there is confirmation for every lifestyle you want to live that is on social media. If you want to hate your mother, there's confirmation on social media. If you want to kill your father, you, there's confirmation on social media. I, I, I pray for TikTok. I pray. Now, I, I know, oh, Lord, I'm going to get upset. I'm going to get upset. Uh, uh, somebody's going to get upset with me, too, about this. But this is true. This needs to be said. Uh, stop demonizing social media. 
because if you don't go on there and preach the truth, you leave it open for the enemy to do what he wants to do. It is important that Christians go on those platforms as well and speak just as loudly about the truth as the enemy does about lies. I, that's that that's that's that it, it's it's important for us to know that. D don't 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 don't. That's why I. That's one of the reasons why I believe the Lord called for a pandemic. And the only type of church you could have was church that was done via social media or the network. Uh, uh, it is important for us to make sure that we do not neglect these avenues, especially since there is a generation that is highly reverential toward those particular environments. Let, let's, 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 let's go a little deeper. It's 915. I don't want to keep you guys all day long. Now, truth, truth, the idea of truth being subjective, not only deals with sexuality, but it deals with some of the most important parts of society. It deals with the basis of for right and wrong. Can everybody put that in the chat? The basis for right and wrong hinges on an absolute truth. You can just put right and wrong if you want. The basis for right and wrong hinges on whether there is an absolute truth. What do you mean Pastor Mitchell, Donald Jones, God bless you. I pray you stay with us for the rest. Uh, th this, this will bless you. This will bless you. I know it will. If, listen to me, if there is not an absolute truth, soon killing will become okay. If, oh Lord, if, if truth is relative, if truth is up to your interpretation, if truth is left up for you to decide, then stealing becomes right soon. How, why do you say this? Now, let's go. It, let's go a little deeper. Truth, truth, being absolute, makes killing wrong. It makes killing wrong absolutely. Watch this. Uh, woo, lawless. I'm, I'm about to tap that First Lady Mitchell. I'm about to tap that. Truth. Absolute truth makes killing wrong. Now, if right is right to me, because it's right to me and it's left up to me. If I decide that killing is okay, it now becomes okay. If truth is left up to the person to decide what it is, the person who believes murdering innocent children is okay. Walking into a school is okay. Soon he won't be, he or she won't be penalized and they won't even have to chuck it up to mental health because if they deem it as okay, if they deem it as right based off their own truth, if truth is left up to us, then how can we call them wrong because it's true because they said it is. Now, it may be wrong to you, but if it's true to them and truth is based off of what you want it to be, then how can you call them wrong? This is important because no person would subscribe that to be absolutely true. Every person on this line would say going into a school and shooting up children is absolutely wrong. 
if going into a school and shooting up children is absolutely wrong, based off of, regardless of whether a person deems it right or wrong, then that means that there is a truth that goes beyond you and I. Oh Lord Jesus, I hope you get what what <laughs> I hope you get what I'm saying. Why is this important? If there is a truth that goes beyond you and I, then that means that there has to be a person who established a law of truth that supersedes mankind being in charge of the truth. Oh, that, 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 Ben, you, you absolutely right. It is, the, it, it is that way now in many cases. Killing is based on uh, their own truth of how they, how they feel. Marvina says, North Carolina just said if a woman was to try and get an abortion, it's, all, it's okay for the father to murder her if he feels his baby's life is in danger. That's a law that they are trying to pass now. Oh my gosh. I don't understand either way. The baby not going to make it. Either way, the baby not going to make it. But if it's okay to take that life, the argument is now, why isn't it okay to take another life? Well, they're not born yet. But you don't know when life began. Life doesn't begin at the heartbeat. Life begins when God says life begins. Oh, Lord. Truth is becoming relative. Truth is becoming subjective. Truth is becoming what you and I want it to be. That danger is that if it becomes what we want it to be, then there really is no truth at all. So there is no suffering in the world because it's only suffering if there is really evil or bad. When you take the true definition of bad and evil out, then we eradicate the possibility for there to be suffering. It just is what it is. The reason why this is dangerous, God bless you, Maurice Stewart. Thank you for joining us. The reason why this is a problem uh, 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 is because no one wants to subscribe to the fact that you can make truth truly when you truly get down to the to the sum total of life itself in the essence of life and what really matters no one wants it to be that it is okay for a person to walk up to you and take your life because you truly see life as valuable now if truth truly is truth then that means there is a lawgiver who put the law of truth into existence. If there is a lawgiver, then you have to eradicate the idea that 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 a uh, truth is left up to us. You also have to eradicate the idea that that truth is is deduced down to all that is physical. Hinduism believes that there is no uh, a spiritual realm, that everything can be deduced down to that which is physical. Buddhism believes that there is no God. Both of them ultimately become lies if there is a God that has been, uh, uh, watch this, that gives us the law of truth. Oh, Lord. That means that there's something that sits over humanity, that that humanity is not the basis for which truth comes from. There is an intelligent being that is able to give a law, decree a law, put it in the hearts of man and sustain it as true. It goes back to our scripture that we came to. Jesus said to them in John chapter 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, Hinduism says that there is no ultimate truth outside of that which is physical. We just proved that that is not true. Because, oh Lord, the, 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 tr the truth, true truth, 
True truth has to go beyond physicality to truly be true. What? Uh, 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 it also means that, that, that Buddhism can't be true because we just express that there has to be a God that sits outside of the realm of physicality that's able to give us a law that transcends physical truth that has to be true outside of physicality, which means he himself, Buddha, he, he himself cannot be God because he believes there is no God. And let me say this, Buddha never subscribed to the fact that he was God. He never said that he was God. There is only one person that ever walked the earth that is the founder of the religions that we know of that claim to be truth, that claim to be God in flesh. When you see me, you have seen the father. Before Abraham was, I am. The, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is only one who has ever said that, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ made a profound statement. He made a profound statement when he said, I am indeed the truth. Now let's 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 go a little bit further, and I, I'm I'm going to stop. I'm try my best to be down, done uh, by nine thirty. There are there is a dangerous, dangerous teaching coming about. This dangerous teaching that is coming about is saying, "Hear me, hear me, family." They're saying that. Watch this. It. All truth, I mean, all religions are, are, are one and the same true. All religions should be able to coexist together as equally true. All of them have as much equal value. Now, if this is true, then it makes the statements of Jesus Christ false. But more importantly, that statement itself makes it, makes it seem that there is no absolute truth. All of them are relatively true on its own. Uh, Ben said, take your time, don't worry about the clock. I want to be respectful to y'all. I'm, 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 I'm trying my best. Devontae Brown, God bless you. Stay with us. Stay with us. Now, 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 uh, 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 he, hear, me, hear me when I say this. This is important for us to know. Every religion can't be true. One of the reasons why so many people state that they don't want to follow God is because they state that the scriptures or religions have contradictions. But if you subscribe to uh, uh, what Erica, Minister Erica is, is absolutely right. There is a word for it called universalism. If you, if you subscribe to the idea that all religions are true, then you're subscribing to the idea innately that contradictions are okay. Because if Buddha can say there is no God, if, if Hinduism can say that, that, that there is no realm outside of the physical, if Jesus can say there is a God and I am God, if, 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 if uh, the Muslims can say that Jesus is just a prophet, uh, if, if, if uh, 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 Mormonism can say no, uh, no, no, no man, uh, no black man can be a priest. Uh, uh, <laughs> Lord, I'm not going to get into that. And, and, and Christianity suggests that every nation and tongue is able, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe will not perish but have everlasting life. That it gives access to every person to be able to walk in the things of God. Uh, it, it, if, if, if all of these things, if Judaism says that Jesus was just a prophet, all of these things become contradictory. But if they all have equally value, uh, 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 equal value and are all equally true, then contradictions become okay. And this family cannot be true. 
which means that the idea of universalism at its foundational core is wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. All, all right, let's go a little deeper. It, they say that, 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 watch this. Making, making statements of truth about everyone having their own truth leaves a person with the option to reject your truth as false and allows them to know uh, 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 or believe what truth is based on what they want it to be. And truth is reduced down to what a person claims to be true. A person that states that following words, uh, 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 that, yeah, that following words written by men. This is this is a good one, y'all. I, I, please listen to this one. A person that states that following words written by men is wrong, and that it is better to just be spiritual, implies God is not consistent enough in His standard to be able to write anything down and give it to man. I want to repeat that again. A person that states that following words written by men is wrong and that it is better to just be spiritual implies that God is not consistent enough in his standard to be able to write anything down and give it to man. Why is this important to hear and know? I, I'm going to tell you why there is a pervasive, there's a pervading argument that people are no longer interested in scripture because the scripture was written by man. Scripture was written by man. Scripture was written by man. The Bible was written by man. The same person, the same person. They they, they, they they decide to say, I'm not, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in organized religion. I'm just spiritual. We heard that before. Who, who are we to place a standard on God? There you go. There you go. Erica Holmes says, we immediately place a standard on God and we place God in a box. Which means that you have become more true than God himself. Oh, Lord, help us today. The scriptures are God breathed. But let's be let's be let's be clear. Let's be clear. God used holy men. Good God have mercy to write the scriptures. The Bible is not a book. It's not a book. It's a library. It is a, it is a library of books that is cohesively written in harmony, written by holy men, holy men that God spake through. And they wrote now, now watch, watch the contradiction in this. They would say that's impossible, but would want you to believe that the very statement it's impossible is true. So you can state a statement of truth as a human being and write it down as true. But the men who wrote it, you want us to disclaim their truth? Come on. Okay. All righty. It imply, It also implies that God deals with each person totally different which would mean that the very advice given by the individual would only apply to him, her, him or her, and would not apply to the person they're advising. So if I say to you, don't, don't use, don't use a, 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 a specific truth. I mean, the scripture that's, 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 that's organized religion. Just follow God and, and he'll give you your own to just be spiritual. He'll give you your own truth. What that means is that the truth for you is different than the truth for me and different for the truth for another person. Because if, it, if it's the same truth that God gives us, if he downloads all uh, to, to us all the same thing, then it is safe 
for it to be written down as true. But if it cannot be written down as true, then it is safe to say that we can't write it down because each one would have a different thing for each person. Uh, is this, do y'all understand this? I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not giving too much. I hope I'm not giving too much. I hope I'm not go, uh, going a little too far. Uh, but we're using the realm of logic here. Logic, it, the Bible says this, it's so simple. The scripture, the truth is so simple that a fool can't even err in it. It is important to note that the very people who are claiming that truth is relative are people who are, are, are uh, making statements of truth, which would imply since truth is relative based off the statement that you're making that I don't have to see your statement is true if I don't want to. Alfred says, Felicity Lewis, I, I, I think this is tagging somebody. God bless you, Alfred. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, Sister Patrice says, what does it say uh, that is incorrect? I do, believe, uh, I do be, uh, believe there is missing text, but the truth from the past are the same ways of the world today. If there is any text that is missing, all of them are found. This is what I don't, this is what I, I, I don't believe. Now, I know that in, in, in uh, Ethiopia, they have, I believe, 86 or 88 uh, uh, books in their Bible. You have the book of Tobit. You, you have second, first and second Esdras. You have the first and second, uh, second Maccabees. You have Bell and the Dragon that is in the Apocrypha and the Septuagint. Those things are not considered to be hidden books. The book, if it's, if it's hidden, we wouldn't be able to access it. If it's, if it's hidden, we wouldn't be able to access it. That is an absolute truth. If they didn't want us to know that they're there, then they wouldn't be there for us to know that they are there. We would still, it would be like the Illuminati. We would still be hearing conspiracies about it, that they exist or don't exist, but we would never have access to the actual information like the Didache. We wouldn't have information about those things. I, I'll tell you the truth of the matter. I'll tell you the truth of the matter. There were councils way before the Council of Constant, uh, Constantine, uh, 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 which was 325 A.D. That was that was the council that uh, uh, Constantine had put together. Way before that was ever in existence, there was a, a structure built to determine what was considered to be canonized. The, those books that were not canonized were books that did not directly uh, uh, express Jesus himself. They were historical books. They had historical information like uh, 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 First and Second Maccabees. The Maccabean revolt was real. They actually went to physical war for Jesus, uh, uh, for, 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 uh, uh, for Judaism. They went to physical war to preserve that which we call scriptures. <laughs> the areas, I miss church history. For, I know that's right. So, yes, they, they can be found. They, they, they can be found. You can you can go right now and, 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 and look up the Septuagint and those books that are, are, are stated to be gone are there. You can you can get, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the modern day uh, preachers of our time, uh, 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 Geno Jennings. If you can get a, a Bible. Uh, uh, you can buy the one of the Bibles that 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 uh, he he promotes uh, uh, that are that are for sale that he sells. It has all of those books in it. The Ethiopian Bible shows that there are that there are different uh, uh, that are 88 books. If they weren't there, they just wouldn't be there for us to see. But let's look at this. The scriptures that we have, the the 66 books that we have that were comprised together were were uh, 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 could they were considered and and and, and, uh, and during a council to be the inspired word of god because they all in harmony in harmony expressed the true message of jesus christ 
who is the fulfillment of all law. Now, uh, I think in 1960, I, I want to be uh, specific. I think, uh, don't quote me, but I know, I know that they found uh, uh, in the caves of Qumran, they found uh, 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 the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, when they when they put it to the King James version and interpreted it, what they found was every last word was explicitly the same and specifically the same. There was no uh, 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 manipulation in the text. There was no man manipulation in the text. This is profound because it means that the Bible that we hold today can be trusted. Can be trusted. I got to I got I got to let you guys go. I got to let you guys go. I, I, we will we will finish this. We'll finish uh, when we when we come back. I'll talk about the historical accuracy. Why Christianity is important today. It confirms the moral consciousness of of uh, of every human. It gives a basis for why the world uh, beca uh, has become the way that it is with suffering and so forth. It gives a basis for, uh, 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 it expresses a God who is willing to participate in the suffering of man to eradicate the suffering of man. Along with its historical accuracy, it confirms science. All these things we will address in great detail. I don't want to be disrespectful to you guys. I want to make sure that I am appreciative of your time because I honor that you always are with me during Bible study. I honor, I honor you guys. Listen, guys, before we go, I want you to know uh, uh, that June 30th, we'll be having an old school fun cookout in Perry Hall, uh, 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 um, Maryland. We are uh, taking off, off work tomorrow. <laughs> I know that's right. Uh, uh, so, I want to I want to make sure you guys are there. I want to make sure you guys are there. Uh, 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 please be there. It's at 1 p.m. I'll give the specific address. We're trying to figure out what part of the field they are allowing us to be on. And we'll give you guys that information as well. Uh, we are uh, continuing the series July 30th, not June 30th, July 30th. Old school fun cookout. Can y'all put that in the chat, please? July 30th. Old school fun cookout dodgeball relay racing uh sack racing uh uh, uh uh double dutch all those games all those games uh, uh volleyball we're going old school we're going to have some fun and we're going to win some prizes we're going to win some prizes please put that in the chat uh if if you can if, if you can hear me please put that in the chat uh so that people who are looking can go it's welcome everyone is welcome Everyone is well. We're going to have some good food. We're going to have some yams. We're going to have some mac and cheese. We're going to have some potato salad. We're going to have some hamburgers. We're going to have some hot dogs. And I might even put some beef ribs on the grill. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 uh. And so I want to make sure you guys remember that our series, Evidence for My Faith, is continuing. Uh, Elder Avery Ash will be teaching the next two uh, Fridays. It's going to be epic. You don't want to miss this. Uh, as well, come if you are sick, if you know someone who is sick, if you know someone who has pain in their body, bring them to the sanctuary. God has been healing in the sanctuary. I want you to go back to the videos that are on my page and see how God has been healing in great lengths uh, uh, at, at uh, uh, Beth Mata. I'm actually going to do a teaching soon on the name Beth Mata so that you can know exactly what it means according to scripture. I want you guys to make sure that you are confident in why we are called Beth Mata and, and really understand uh, uh, the name that the Lord has given. As well, I want you to remember uh, Bible study is Wednesday at 8.30. Wednesday at 8.30. Wednesday at 8.30. Uh, Wednesday at 8. Please, please, please invite someone. Tell someone. Put this in your calendar. Please, let's take Bible study seriously. It is a defense against what the enemy is trying to do in our nation and in the nations abroad. 
Someone needs to hear this and we need to be equipped to tell someone else when we're when we're talking to them uh, 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 throughout the way or throughout the day, throughout the week as well. Fridays are our Sundays. Fridays are our Sundays. Fridays are our Sundays. Friday at 7 p.m. We are in prayer and 730 service starts. One want to make sure you are there. 5444 Bel Air Road, Baltimore, Maryland, 21206. Be there. It will be awesome. I promise you, you don't want to miss it. In addition to that, uh, I'm also going to post an itinerary as well. Uh, I'll be preaching out at a few different preaching engagements. And if you can support, I would love to see your faces in the building. Uh, many of the events will be on Sundays. Uh, uh, so you guys can support on Sundays as well for those of you who want to worship on Sunday. Nothing worship, nothing wrong with worshiping on Sunday. Nothing wrong with worshiping at all on Sunday. The Lord just told me to do Fridays and I'm uh, uh, adhering to his word. As well, uh, uh, before we go, I want to make sure that if there's anyone on here that does not know Christ in the parting of their sins, or if you know someone that does not know Christ in the parting of their sins that desires to be saved, I want you to have them reach out to us. Uh, if you uh, desire to know the Lord in the parting of your sins, I want you to put, I want to be saved uh, in the chat. Put, I want to be saved. Put, I want to be saved. I, I, I don't take this lightly. This is extremely important to me. I want it to be important to you because where we're going uh, uh, it is important that we know Christ, that we have a firm foundation in truth. In addition to that, Christ is coming back. He is coming back. Jesus is coming back again. And it is important for us to know and be confident that we will be able to see him in peace. In addition to that, if you don't have a church home and you desire to be a part, if you don't have a church home and you truly, truly desire to be a part, you truly, truly desire to be a part of a church home that loves the Lord, that preaches truth. I want you to connect with us. I want you to connect with us. Uh, our doors are open. We are accepting family members. You don't have to be uh, blood because we are all blood as we are part of uh, the family through the blood of Jesus Christ. That makes us blood family. Come and join us. Be a part, be a part, be a part, be a part. If you know somebody that doesn't have a church home, bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them uh, as well. I want to give you an opportunity to sow as well. If you have not sowed, uh, sow into the word of God, sow into this. It is more blessed to give than to receive. In addition to that, the scripture talks about Elijah and how uh, there was a great uh, 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 famine in the land. And the prophet came to the Shunammite woman and encouraged her to sow into the prophet. As she sowed into the prophet, her life was blessed. She was able to live off of that which she had left as a result of sowing into the prophet. And when she came to the prophet, she said, I don't have enough to live. We're going to die. Uh, she had just enough left for a loaf of bread. However, as a result of being obedient and sowing, God expanded that which he had. I challenge you today. I challenge you today to sow. If you trust the prophetic voice that God has given me, I'm not for everybody and that's fine. And, and, and I, I don't have no gimmicks. I don't, I, don't, I don't do anything with the church's money besides take care of the church. <laughs> so I want you to know that. But this is a challenge for you to sow. So, so today. So, uh, if you desire to sow, dollar sign Beth Mata, B E T H M A D A. If you have Zell, 443 360 7596. If you have PayPal, you can use Beth Mata Inc. at gmail.com. Beth Mata Inc. at gmail.com. God bless you all. I look forward to seeing you guys soon again. I love fellowshipping with you all. You guys be blessed. And I hope to see you next Bible study. Until then, if you have any prayer requests, shoot them out to us. We'll be praying for you.